What is the one experience you wish I never had? We all know the answer to that. But tell the world. <laughs> I don't know, that raises an interesting question. Like, of course I wish that you had never been arrested. Like, of course I wish that, but then, you know, who, who would you be? I know with Islam, it teaches, you know, everything happens for a reason. I just wish it never happened. Mm -hmm. I was blamed for something that I've never did. What do you remember from the first time we met? <laughs> uh, the first time we met, it was at church. And we were sitting in that room. Uh, you were at the table, and uh, Paul was next to you. And you were pitching the idea of the documentary to me. And I was sitting on the other side, and I'm just like, mm, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> and Damaris was with me. We just kept staring at each other. That's funny because I didn't actually come up with the idea for the documentary until like seven months after we met. No, you bought it up then. No, I remember because we, I, I was just, I couldn't believe what had happened to you. So I wanted to know. So then I what were we it, talking about at the table? I was just asking you like what had happened. You did. <clears throat> you did. Yeah, because I remember very clearly like the day that I was like, this should be a film. But Paul was sitting next to you. He was. He was definitely I, sitting next I, to you. I feel like I became an adult, like, while meeting you, I went from You were always an adult no, to I me. No, I was a, you know, I'm still, I'm a clumsy boy, like, scrambling around <laughs> playing grown-up, you know, I have that imposter syndrome. But definitely, I remember, I still have video footage of, like, a, a little video letter that I recorded for your lawyers at the time, uh -huh. to try to convince them to encourage the documentary or to let you participate. Um, and I was so terrified, you know, making that, making that video recording, calling them on the phone for the first time, like calling lawyers. I was like, I don't, how do you talk to lawyers? What are you supposed to say? I think <laughs> I said, like, Google it. <laughs> I like scripted out my like speech to them and, you know, it was kind of a slow. Did you believe them? Well, that was, that was my hope. That's what I was hoping was going to happen. No, did you believe the FEDA, what they said about me? when you first heard the story? The FBI? No, absolutely. I mean, all I heard was that the FBI arrested one of our students, you know, and I thought, that's, that's insane. What, what kind of universe are we living in? And then when I saw that you were Muslim, you know, I, it's still, it's unacceptable, but I said, oh, we live in a universe where that's possible now, where because she wears a headscarf, like, this is acceptable. And then, and then as, as soon as, I, I think maybe seeing the headscarf at the same time as I saw this huge, radiant smile, and it was that combination as well. I was like, this does not look like a dark, menacing like person who I would like would imagine the FBI would be scouring the earth for, you know, in terms of like let's protect America and you know round up any anybody we can. It was you did not match the profile in my mind that for them I did. Yeah, sixteen-year-olds are dangerous yeah. <laughs> for them. What are you hesitant to tell me? <laughs> I told you. So, um, I told you about my mom. Uh -huh. So, it was uh, one night I was telling, I was trying to convince her, you know, we should let this guy tell, film us. My mom was really scared, really scared. And for a while, she didn't trust you. But my mom is the type of person you come to her home, she's still going to take care of you. She'll feed you, she'll smile and make you laugh and feel comfortable. But she was very worried that you were out to hurt us. And I think that's something I've never shared with you. How, lo how long did that go on for? Do you have um, any idea? I'm not sure about time frame. But I know you gave Abdul a camera. Uh -huh. And she was very nervous when you gave her. She's like, I think he's recording us privately, uh, secretly. And I said, no, no, no. You could trust him. We have nothing else to lose. If he's really an agent, he wants to come and film us. Let him see the truth. We have nothing to hide. Maybe if he comes and films us, maybe things will get better. Maybe they will let go of my father because he was still detained. Um, maybe then they will actually believe that I'm not a terrorist. So that's when we both agreed, OK. And then at first, she's like, I don't know. And she would say, pull out a time, so I don't know. And I'm just like, nah, nah, it's only day one. <laughs> Let's give it a try again. It's funny, because I remember like, during the, that time, you know, I, I was aware that you didn't trust me, or that you weren't emotionally able 
to open up about your experience. You know, you were going through trauma, and to speak about that in the moment yeah. was, you know, I, didn't, I don't think it was possible for you. So I spent so much time with your brothers, and, <laughs> and I feel like I didn't get to know you until later, you yeah. know, until like those final interviews. Because I didn't know if I should trust you. I said, ah. Oh. I'm gonna slip up and said, hey, today I'm depressed. And he's like, oh, see, she said she's depressed. And then use it against me. So, how do you mil win a million dollars? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> when are you worried for me? <laughs> when am I worried for you? Yes. I was worried when agents came to this job. You know, it had been a long time since I had worried about you. You know, that moment when they came back, I really thought it was over, and then to know that they were back, <laughs> that was horrible. I knew they weren't gonna leave me alone. Be honest, I don't think they're done with me. Do you think? I, I, I mean, I can't tell, I, like, the last thing I wanna say is something will make you continue to feel afraid. You it's know, too I, late. They already did I know, that. You know, I just, I, <laughs> it's you know, it's, too late. I want to always make you feel better, and I want to like comfort you. And I think they're gonna keep coming back until I say I'm done. And I'm gonna be here till the end of time. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. You're gonna point and right <laughs> finger and say, "Fight, fight, fight!" You can't make me cry. I have my face <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> what has living here taught you about your identity? Living in New York? <laughs> here. Whatever that is. Well, this is home. Um, I've never questioned. Well, I have. But I've never really thought of anywhere else as home. I am a Dama from New York City. I live in the United States, and I am an American. Others may argue with you, or will argue with me about it, but it's not what they think or how they feel, it's how I feel. But I don't think it's, you know. I think I answered the question. Yeah, I mean, I, one, I'm curious about what was that moment like when you found out you were undocumented? Oh, that was horrible. You hear about undocumented people but you don't know what to do if you're undocumented or what to say. So when someone tells you that, I'm a 16 year old in handcuffs and this officer is yelling at me, telling me, well, you're not undocumented. I, I, I sunk inside of me, it's like, wait, I have a social security card. I thought he was lying to me because I'm like, I have a social security card. I don't know what he's talking about, but as I go deeper and talk to lawyers, I was undocumented. But I, I knew I was an American, and you couldn't take that away from me. And but now you have to prove it. That was that whole case about. That was what the whole hearing is about. Prove to us why you belong here. Prove to us why we should keep you here. Me, a 17-year-old who've been here since I was two. How do you argue that? I wanted to argue to the judge, hey, Islam is not this religion of terrorism. I'm not this terrorist. So I opened the book and I'm reading the Quran and everything started making sense to me. It was just me and this Quran. But it found, it kept telling me to be patient. I came across this verse. It says, after every hardship, there's ease. And it says it three times. Um, and I just said to myself, okay, this is temporary. Let me go back to who I am. Let me go back to my identity. Let me not lose who I was just because someone is saying something else. I think that's what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to throw the towels and then lose my identity and just be a mindless human being. But every day I think I'm reminded that I have three strikes against me. I'm black, I'm a woman, and I'm Muslim, but I have to, I can't use those excuses. I have to, I don't know the word that I'm looking for, but I have
have to go past those strikes. I have to be stronger. Ooh, what's something I don't know about you that you think would surprise me? <laughs> what's something that you don't know about me that you think? I think there's times when I have felt like depressed or anxious or, you know, unwell. And I, you know, even just today, like before we met up, I was feeling anxious. I was feeling anxious. There's, you know, a number of things going on. And then as soon as I saw you, it kind of floated away. And I just, Aww. I felt good being around you. And I always feel good at being around you. I feel the same way too. I feel like a reunion, a high school reunion. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I, you bring me to that moment. Even though we were going through everything, you brought a lot of joys and laughter to the house. So it always brings me back to that. I'm like, oh, David's around. Ha, ha, ha. Let's make jokes. Let's do that. So, I don't know, you've always have this aura about you. <laughs> when were you the proudest of me? <laughs> when was I the proudest of you? <clears throat> I get, you know, I, pride isn't exactly the word, but it is on, it's one of many words. But like when you were granted asylum, you know. I remember getting the call, I was at truce, and I like, it was like jumping and shouting and wow. and then I remember like telling people like Adama got asylum and some people were like who's Adama <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I need to go to her house and like share in this and be able to like you know give her a Dad. hug and laugh <laughs> and cry and celebrate with her I was like I need to be with oh my gosh. Know, if not you know I, at least my friends who would understand what this meant you know what what that what those years had been like and <laughs> and, the, and that you had stayed you remained sane and whole and beautiful and strong, you know? Wow. I, for me, the proudest I've been of you is when you released the documentary. You, um, PBS was gonna air it. You came over to the house, but I, your voice, you were so, I think I was working, right? I remember just watching it with your dad inside. Yeah, you were so proud of that moment. I rem that was like, well, I was like, wow, David did it. <laughs> David did it.